The global cost of living crisis and the impact of the war in Ukraine on food prices has hit families around the world hard. None more so than in Bangladesh, which last year hiked fuel prices by 50% overnight. It led to a steep rise in the cost of basic food items such as rice and vegetables. I went to Bangladesh to see firsthand the impact on some of the country's most vulnerable who were already struggling. A warning that some of what you're about to see is extremely distressing. Israt is more than a year old. But she's severely underweight, half of what she should be for her age. Her mother can't afford rising food prices and fears she'll have to beg soon. The family gets some rice rations from the government, but it's not enough. I am hungry. My children cry because they are hungry. We don't eat meat or fish anymore. Even fresh vegetables are so costly. What can we do? Every third child here in Jamalpur is malnourished. Already one of Bangladesh's poorest districts, deeper in poverty after the pandemic, floods, and the impact of rising oil prices since the war in Ukraine. Isrit's father works these fields. It costs more to farm here. The land that fed his family now threatens to starve them. I am struggling to support my family now. I don't earn that much. But still, I have to spend a large amount of my earnings just to buy fuel for irrigation. We are growing rice here but we can't even afford it. From villages to cities, similar struggles. Bangladesh was forced to go to the IMF this year after its economy faltered. The cost of rice has risen by more than 50% since pre-COVID times in Bangladesh. In fact, the prices of many basic food items continue to increase. Take the broiler chicken, a staple in many low-income households. Well, in one month alone this year, it rose by a third. At this hospital in the capital, Dhaka, mums are taking part in a healthy eating workshop. But with the price of a potato now up by 75% on last year, basics they could once afford are now luxuries. And at the ward, we see just how bad things can get when children aren't fed a proper diet. Bed after bed, young patients severely malnourished. Yasin's nearly two. He has stunted growth and is very sick. Doctors advised me to give more nutritious food to my son. But I can't afford nutritious food. So, how does my baby boy get nutrition? Life nowadays is really hard for people like me. A few days later, and Yasin's doing a little better. But once home, he'll return to a life of hunger and hardship. It's a cycle of desperation. In the cost of living crisis in Bangladesh, the youngest are paying a high price. Our report there from Bangladesh and the shoot edit on that was Neha Sharma and the producer Amir Pirzada. Well, earlier I spoke to Shaheen Chugdai, Save the Children's Country Director in Bangladesh. The Bangladesh, like other countries in the region and indeed many countries around the world, um, is vulnerable to these kinds of shocks from the pandemic and also some of the other uh, shocks that we've seen because of um, underlying structural issues. A key, a key factor would be uh, poverty. So when people are poor, they don't have assets or reserves that they can fall back on. And so they're more vulnerable to these kinds of shocks, which would then aggravate the existing levels of hunger and malnutrition that are in the country.
So there's no safety net for people like some of the people that I met in that report. Um, and they're relying on the government or organisations like yourselves to, to fill that gap then. Well, in Bangladesh um, and in countries around the region, uh, there are some safety nets, there are some social protection uh, schemes designed to help the poor families, but they aren't sufficient. And of course, when you're dealing with very large numbers of poor people, then ultimately you, you do need to try and look at other solutions to lift people out of poverty. Now, if we look at, like a, a, look at a country like Bangladesh, we can see that because of its economic growth in, in recent years, uh, millions of people have actually been lifted out of poverty. And then there are various other programs which the government of Bangladesh has prioritized to try to address uh, structural poverty, to try to support uh, people's livelihoods, to try to disseminate um, um, better information about diets and nutrition that would also help people to make the right kind of choices. But we need to see more of that work. And um, there has been progress, but we need to, to build on that progress, continue those kinds of collaboration between the government, its international donor partners with development organizations such as Save the Children to address the root causes of, of this challenge as well as treating its symptoms. As we saw in, in that report there, one of the families that I met said that they do get some rice rations from the government, but it's simply not enough. Now, Bangladesh's government has said that the war in Ukraine has actually been a real factor when it comes to rising prices and inflation. Other countries as well saying that the impact of that is taking its toll. But what can be done then to reverse the tide of families who are really suffering, can't afford fresh food, um, fresh meat, fresh vegetables, and are really struggling to feed their children basic nutrients. Yes, we, we have to remember that when these global shocks occur, although they affect everyone, including in, in wealthier countries, it's the poorest communities in the poorer countries that are going to be hit the hardest. And they simply don't have the kind of assets or reserves that we could that they could fall back on to absorb those shocks. So as your report said, when you have a fuel price rise of 50 percent, um, that's going to absorb so much of the very limited income and money that, that poor households would have. So what we need to do is try to address those root causes. How can we get um, those communities, and particularly vulnerable communities, um, to strengthen their, their livelihoods, strengthen their, in, uh, their um, sources of income so that they earn more money. They have also, alongside that, uh, better services, better information to support their, their nutrition needs, uh, the information that they need to, to uh, support the health of particularly younger children who are especially vulnerable to the impacts of, of malnutrition. How can we help those families so that they're able to earn a steadier income, a higher income, and be able to absorb those kinds of shocks? And that is going to take a collective effort. The government, its international partners, development organizations, all working together in order to address those root causes.